He says, uh, one question I have for you for the 1 p.m. call is how to do something, uh, how do someone know what their calling is? A lot of our thoughts are shaped by ideas we have linked together growing up or by what we watch. This is correct. That's why we can't trust our thoughts. Uh, example, I may daydream at work about doing something else, being a boxer. Uh, this may be just a story I tell myself to get through the day rather than what my true purpose is. Any tips would be appreciated. So one of the things I like to say is that God speaks to us through revelation, right? And if you want to know what your, your call is, you, we can't get there. It's, it's, we can't get there by logic. We can't get there by thinking. We can't get there by feeling. We can't get there by our will because all those things are very easily led astray. Like you said, you get it. You understand. My thoughts are shaped by my experiences. A lot of our feelings are shaped by traumas. Many of our feelings, are, you know, when we have, we, you know, they say, trust your heart. Well, your heart, that means, you know, feel your feelings. I'm not saying don't feel your feelings, don't honor your feelings, but don't trust in your feelings <laughs> because a lot of them come from uh, trauma. A lot of our feelings are, are based on trauma. And our will is. Our will, we, we will for sinful things. In other words, things that are outside the realm of what we were created for, right? I know I've been there wanting things that really aren't for me. Um, and sometimes God gives me those things. <laughs> and, then I, and then I turn around and I'm like, wow, I really didn't want that. But I guess I had to, I had to my dad always says, you know, I can tell you not to touch the stove top, but until you touch it, you won't know. So sometimes we got to hurt ourselves. We got to go astray in order to come back home. I know I have. I know I have. And so that, that has been a byproduct of trusting my thoughts, right? The things I see other people do. Recently, someone, uh, if you guys got a chance to see it, I posted a, uh, a documentary a young man did on me. Uh, and he, he posted it on uh, YouTube. It's called The Rise and Fall of, of Elliot, Elliot Hulse. Um, and in it, I could see, I could see various points in which I, you know, it, it was great. I'm happy that he did that for me because I was able to watch myself objectively. And I saw where, when I was in my quote unquote king phase, right? He pointed out that there was a phase where Elliot, you know, I was wearing sunglasses. I started wearing earrings. I was in my king phase. You know what I was doing? I was watching what the popular YouTubers were doing. I, you know, I, prior to that, I never watched what anybody did on YouTube. I didn't know what anybody was doing on YouTube. I wasn't a part of the quote unquote community because I just made videos and went home. Um, but then, you know, that was like when Ty Lopez got popular and a couple of other guys, and they were all about showing the flashiness of their lifestyle and it worked for them, right? So I figured, you know, I'm kind of, I'm running dry with answering questions, um, which is a totally different story. You know, of course I'm here back with you. I was like, but I, I sense that I should keep creating content. Let me see what other guys are doing. What's working for them. And it just, it didn't, of course it didn't come across right <laughs> because it wasn't right. <laughs> it didn't feel right. It didn't, I, I, there was some part of me that sensed it wasn't right and it didn't come across right. Because it was, it was me listening to what my thoughts were saying based on what I was seeing. One of the things he talks about in The Dark Night of the Soul, St. John of the Cross, is that we have to purgate our senses. And that means, like, Haran, if you're looking for what you need to be doing, right, you know, what your calling is, the worst thing you could do is look at what other people's calling is. And it's so easy. Like, you talk about boxing. Now, I don't know what you're relationship is to boxing but you know mike tyson just made a boxing comeback right um there were a bunch of strong men that were doing boxing like boxing was a cool new thing i think mike uh uh who's that big black bodybuilder that's in the, on youtube all right where, i can't believe i'm drawing a blank right now mike rashid you know he was doing boxing and stuff and so very easy to be like, wow, look at what these guys are doing. It's really cool. Maybe I need to go do that. But there's no discernment. There's pure thought matter, right? There's no truth in it. So what he, what he recommends is, and not even he recommends, but he says that you'll be tossed into this. This is why he calls it the dark night of the soul. You'll be tossed into a place of uh, what he calls aridity, arid, dryness. 
And instead of resisting dryness, he says, you got to sit in the dryness, almost like where I told uh, um, Jonathan, sorry. Almost like how I told Jonathan to, to, be with the boor, to be with the boredom. What he's saying, he called it ar uh, aridity, the aridness, meaning that uh, be okay that you don't have sensual insight as to what to do. He says, that's a good thing.